this is super high quality right here the you know bug zapper the tennis racket bug zapper I mean does that say quality that says quality with a capital K especially this high-speed tape that's been applied Now, when you make a bug zapper that looks like a tennis racket, I think something like this is bound to occur. So, what do we got here? We've got a nice long handle, so you get plenty of swing. Depends how much you like bugs or how much you hate them. How hard you're going to swing. The inertia, the leverage everything just means destruction so i think it still works i think it hang on let's just no the light's not coming on so could be batteries could be whatever but i want to tear this down and i want to get the electronics out of it because i've got plans for it okay so let's have a look at the at the construction here we've got um, a metal expanded metal in the front and the back same type um, inside there's another stretched expanded metal and um, I know from experience that a relatively high voltage gets generated by the electronics and gives you a potential difference between this outer grid and this inner grid so the inner grid is the live one and the outer grid is ground so you can still zap yourself with it though because uh, one of my daughter's friends did so wow stip the wow stick coming into its own. Now, I'll tell you what, when you put tape on stuff, you always pay for it. You always pay in the end. There. Okay, so. Just did what you should never do with something like this. You've got, you've got a cover like this, you've got a whole bunch of fasteners in it. <laughs> If you tip it upside down, they all fall out. So, if you're intending to put it back together, it's a good idea to, you know, try and leave it horizontal so the fasteners will stay in. Okay, so we're not going to need the uh, we're not going to need the um, wow stick again. I don't, well, we hang on. Yes, we will. One more wow stick application. Whoop, wrong way. Oh, come on, baby. You can do it. Oh, what's going on? Yep, the thread came out with it. All right. So, what do we got here? Standard sort of bat battery carrier, so we've got two cells in in series, and look, some more creatures in here, more creatures. <laughs> and there's a classic. Look how that wire has been um, crushed. Uh, see if we can pick that up over here. Lighting's not great. Crushed wire when it was assembled. So I've never had this apart. Okay, so what do we got in here? Here's a circuit diagram of what we're looking at. Here's the battery, and the, the power switch is actually in the negative or in the ground circuit, which is a little bit unusual. 
Uh, I've got a simple LED setup here and 1K resistor, which is pretty normal. And here's our uh, NPN transistor. And that's hooked up so that it's getting uh, positive feedback off the transformer where it's hooked in. So you've just got a, a base resistor here of 1K and then it's getting positive feedback through here and obviously the way that they've tapped this transformer we're getting uh, about 20 kilohertz uh, oscillation in this little oscillator circuit which is as basic as it could be but on the output here we've got the uh, voltage tripler circuit so what happens in the voltage tripler is that the diode acts as a half-wave rectifier and so this cap charges up to the output voltage here, whatever that might be. And then the charge in this capacitor is trapped from discharging by this diode. So it goes through to this diode on the next peak and charges up this cap, which is now at two times that potential. And once again, it can't discharge uh, because of the diode then third pass, this C3 charges up to three times the um, source voltage, and then finally charges up C4, and then we have the zap. So there's, there's our circuit. It's pretty straightforward, and the only real unknown is the, um, is the, the transformer here, uh, but could have a bit of I guess we could have a bit of a go at working out uh, what that's outputting. So, got the um, board set up here, and there's the switch, and I've got the I've got the oscilloscope set to look at the oscillator, which is created with this little uh, transistor here. And here's the multimeter. <clears throat> Going to have a look at the output voltage of our voltage multiplier circuit. Um, so basically we've got a transformer here that's overwound. So that's giving us a boost. And then we've got a voltage tripler on the output and a big cap to store the zaps. So here we go. So we're getting roughly 20 kilohertz on the oscillator and that's giving us a not too inconsiderable 1.5 kilovolts. So 1526 volts of, uh, well it's actually saying DC and that's probably because of the frequency. It's not not recognizing that as, uh, as AC. So, um, that's fairly impressive, <laughs> gotta say, from a little crusty little circuit like this. So I tried the multimeter out on these outputs here, but it can't make head or tail of what it's getting off of here because that's going to be uh, a boosted up 20 kilohertz signal and it just doesn't know what to make of it. But um, all things considered, uh, if we've got 1500 volts uh, coming off the back uh, of this, then roughly, let's say, uh, divide that by 3, which is 500 volts. So we've probably got around 500 volts coming off, off the transformer. And so then um, if we divide 500 uh, divided by 3 equals 166 so that's roughly going to be our step up so a 1 to 166 step up so hopefully that's enough detail on this board there's not much to it oscillator step up transformer voltage tripler cap and zap and uh, it's interesting to me that uh, you've got the you've got the transformer here which is a step up and the voltage tripler. 
So that must be a more economical way of adding more and more and more caps and diodes to make a quadrupler or an octupler or whatever uh, for the for the circuit. And I have to say, uh, this would make a fairly effective uh, stun gun circuit, really. Uh, I did actually give myself a bit of a zap. Yep, I picked the board up when it was charged up and I touched uh, one of the leads under here. Sorry about the blob of blue tack. Uh, I touched one of the leads under here and got a proper belt off it. So, you know, that's... That's how I suffer to bring you these these videos. I've got plans for this. I want to build a bug zapper with like an ultraviolet light in it that attracts the bugs and zaps them between two plates instead of, uh, you know, a mesh or something like this. So I'm just going to use a PC board for that. And the idea is that the UV light source is going to be somewhat shaded uh, from the view of people so you might be able to see a glow but you're not going to be able to see uh, the ultraviolet LEDs uh, themselves and I'm going to make a nice sort of um, decorator kind of thing out of it a 3d printed thing anyway it's just something that's been on my mind for a long time and now I've got this this little circuit I can I can create something that I think would look quite nice in a room setting and hopefully kill some bugs. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back with more stuff, more crazy projects, and other stuff that I like to do. So until next time, onward and upward.